Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another faction preview video for the upcoming Amazon DLC for Total War Troy as we complete our preview with a look at Hippolyta's skill tree. So Hippolyta is an archer hero, uh, epic hero that is, and she has the same setup, you know, 14 skills to level up to and two tiers in each one as well as a choice between two skills. At tier 1, you always start out with Flights of Artemis, which is a self-boosting ability that will cost 50 Rage. So here is a Rage cost, gotta keep in track of those to see if we need skills such as Bloodthirsty, if that's even available on us. But if we have this active, we get 45 seconds of extra 50% missile damage and 25% speed for maneuvering ourselves. Then beyond that, we have the choice between Centaur Drill, which allows us to fire while moving while we are um, basically going to be on a mount so a horseback or a chariot and if we upgrade that we can get centaur drill which increases our speed and still allow us to fire while moving or we can have increased reload skill so faster firing in terms of attack speed or if we give this up we can go with deadly focus which boost our allies and this is kind of a choice already of whether building yourself into this strong archer hero or into one that commands the troop and boost your unit into something that's stronger and this will boost all allies in range uh, 100 meters so quite large and you get plus 10 accuracy to all your archers and this is quite nice in my opinion and something that you have to kind of decide early on or maybe just don't use your early skill point and see if you want to just have Hippolyta as this boosting general that will help all your other archers do much more damage since you do have a ton of archers in your unit. And then you can increase that to give plus 10 reload speed to all your ally or increase 15 morale. Both are great options. And then moving on, we have a choice between Generous Host, which will give us plus 20 growth in local province, plus 3 happiness in local province. And this is also another theme as you are trying to build Amazon Kingdom. So you're going to be taking over a lot of land that has no influence whatsoever. And as you boost the influence, you're going to want to boost the growth. You're going to want to boost the happiness. But this is also quite a nice bonus to receive. And that can be farther increased to increase five happiness when garrisoned in a given settlement and plus additional 20 growth. Or you can have plus five favors with the gods of the local temple when garrisoned. So this will slow down the decay, which is 10 points per turn. And then we also have artisanship on the other side. And this gains Amazon treasures after battle based on how strong the enemy army is. This is quite nice, to be honest. Um, this on one hand will help you a lot in terms of building your settlement up. Uh, this will directly impact how your campaign progresses as the Amazon treasures is your faction unique resource and I would probably opt for this version and this can be upgraded to one that will gain additional Amazon treasures when you capture any given settlement. Moving on we have Hand of Artemis which is ability that will increase the missile damage of the heroes on one side and also can increase our range or increase our reload skill. So once again, this is more character focused. And here we have the other option. So the choice here is increase damage or increase range and increase ammo. And this can be increased to more ammo or you have increased to more range, but you lose some attack speed. So both of these, since they're both yellow skills, they are gonna be ones that are focused on your own character. I don't think either one is wrong in particular uh, you already have a ton of range of 180 you pretty much outrange everything already and getting additional range while losing some attack speed i feel like it's not worth it increasing ammo obviously is a good thing because ammo really dictates your total damage output but i think in the end here maybe this damage is better um, you could do the math here. 20% to missile damage versus 20% to ammo should be the same thing, but you see more effects of this up front versus this one. Uh, so technically, you can see here, so total would be 30% uh, to ammo. So I guess it would be slightly higher total damage output this way, but you get slightly higher uh, DPS over here, and uh, you can increase your reload speed for even higher DPS. So I still think maybe this side's better because it's not often you're going to end up using all 60 of your ammo, but maybe I'm wrong there. 
And even if you do use all your ammo, you have are pretty good um, melee attack stats as well. Moving on, formation specialists or drill experts. Formation specialists will boost all the ammo of missile units in your army, plus some missile resistance in your army. And that can be farther increase for more attack speed, uh, increasing the reload speed, and also more missile resistance. Or it can just increase armor piercing damage of your missile units while giving you slightly less missile resistance. Uh, this obviously once again goes along the line of boosting your archers in your army. A very good choice in my opinion. Or you can take Drill Expert which will start all new recruits at plus one rank. And you can alter that for two-handed infantry or your missile units. So this could be plus two ranks to missile units which although sounds pretty good. I actually favor this side much more because I find that missile units have a pretty easy time of staying alive in battles. They're not going to get wiped. So they can rank up pretty easily, especially if you give them a boost compared to, let's say, melee units that are two handed charging units that are in our sister's army. Those might need more help to gain a couple ranks early so they can upgrade into better variations. Whereas the Amazon archers themselves are pretty strong units to begin with because the frontline units are the one that are getting punished with worry uh, in terms of their unit ability. So I would probably favor this side. Moving on we have Ares Thunder versus Swift of Heal. And this side for Ares Thunder we have ability that costs 75 um, rage cost. It will affect us and all enemies around us. Uh, not ourselves but basically around ourselves. And that will basically provide a debuff to enemy in terms of 30% melee defense and that can be upgraded to contain additional morale penalties or additional armor penalties. Uh, pretty good debuff if we get into the thick of things. Or on the other hand, we have a self-heal ability um, that can... not self-heal, sorry. Yeah, self, um, self-applied self ability that will give us faster reloads that will cost us rage per second. So a lot of rage spent uh, by... Uh, our abilities here but this will give us faster reload and that can increase missile damage on top of that or just smaller rage cost um i think if you consider the fact that this costs 75 to activate and this will give us basically if we have 75 right that's basically 15 seconds yeah i think 15 seconds of this ability um that will give us some faster reload speed which will help us put out more arrows during this time period and also increased missile damage. I tend to favor maybe this side, consider we are unlikely to get into the thick of things since we are our archer unit. To have this 75 uh, rage cost ability that will affect anything within 50 meters of ourselves. Um, it's strong, don't get me wrong, I think Ares Under is very strong to give this huge debuff on enemy units. Uh, but might not be the most feasible one because it's going to be hard to build up 75 Rage as we haven't seen the Bloodthirsty skill become available to us. Moving on, we have Normad's Way, uh, which will increase experience received in Battle for All units. This is actually pretty important for Amazons as the initiation right require you to rank up before you can unlock new units and you can farther increase the experience received by all missile units by another 50% for a total of 100%. Uh, with this upgrade or you can focus on cavalry units which both can make a great argument for because many of your ranged missile units are also cavalry units so you could go both way here and i think most units will benefit but this is probably going to be more beneficial to your early game units because early game amazon archers and hippolyte chosen are both infantry missile units and not cavalry so in a sense getting this combination will help you unlock some of your better cavalry units in the late game faster and then once you have the stronger cavalry units they have a pretty easy time gaining experience and staying alive so i think this is the way to go with the missile option on the other hand you can boost your uh, missile unit range in the whole army with followers of artemis and that can be applied to javelins for more range boost or for archers for more range boost this is actually legit too if you're not having difficulty ranking up your units, because this just gets you faster to where you want to go, um, but it doesn't actually make you stronger on that journey, whereas this will make you stronger by giving you more range, so outranging enemy units with your archers become much more feasible, it will probably give you easier time in reaching those desired rank. So for these choices, I actually might go with something that make us just inherently stronger. 
on this side with the followers of Ar Artemis rather than going for something like a shortcut or the nomad the nomad's way. Uh, moving on, we once again have a self-boosting choice in the heavy bow, increasing our armor piercing damage and then increasing that farther but losing some reload speed. Or we can have heroic spirit which will increase our morale by 10 points and then can make us unbreakable or cause fear. Um, the fear is the nice part, but since we are mainly a range unit and we're not really going to get into the thick of things, I think the heavy bow is definitely the option, and 5% reload skill is not that bad Consider we have a, a lot of skills above we just seen that can boost our reload speed. So I think heavy bow is the choice here to make ourselves a pretty decent assassin with the bow that we have. And then a farther upgrade here, Rallying Cry, a pretty typical morale boosting ability, cost 50 rage. So unlike Penthethalia, who has Bloodthirsty, we have a lot of ability that use rage, but not a lot of ways to gain them. This boosts morale and melee defense of yourself and all allies within your 30 meter, 30 meter range for 45 seconds. This will reduce the cooldown from 3 minutes to 2 minutes, and this will increase the range from 30 to 60. Uh, decent, but uh, rage cost is definitely a consideration here. On the other hand, you have a cheaper rage cost or something that affects enemy in range. And what this does is it will allow you to channel a very powerful shot to target that enemy. And uh, it's very good against single target. So think of this as a target ability, probably targeting enemy generals. In my opinion, you're targeting 250 meters away. It will cost you 30 rage. You have to be dismounted to fire this shot. So that's also something you might want to consider. Um, I think it's totally legit to keep her as an infantry because you do have a lot of good skills. And when you give up Centaur Drill, which is really for the cavalry option, you can get Deadly Focus, which help boost ally accuracy, which is quite important given that most of your army are archers. Alright, uh, back to the upgrades for Apollo's Aim. You can get this uh, channel shot for increased damage, or you can have this option for reduced cost. It goes from 30 rage to 20 rage, which might be better in my opinion, since if you take a look at this, I don't actually see a cooldown. All right, nowhere on this skill does it say it has a cooldown. So the only cooldown is really your rage cost. So instead of having extra damage every 30 rage, you can just shoot more of these, right? You can shoot three of these shots with, you know, 60 rage rather than with uh, two of these shots with 30 rage. Given that rage is kind of hard to gain for us. Then we have Inspirational Leader. This increases the recruitment capacity of our army uh, in our current province for all armies, or for our own army, I guess, Heroes Army. And then we can also increase that by one more. This obviously just help us build up our armed forces faster. Quality of life change, I don't think it's that good, especially if you compare it to wise, which give us food faction wide and also plus two influence. I tend to like to play the economic game quite a bit. I like to build them out to the max amount of food we can get, even though someone has recently showed me the math that you can just forego influence and you get a pretty efficient build that doesn't pay out as much, obviously, but it doesn't cost as much to build. So definitely two different approaches depending on how fast you want to play your campaign. But if you're building tall and going slow as Hippolyta, then wise is definitely the way to go. And then you can farther get wood or uh, stone. I would always get the wood. Wood seems so much more useful than stone in this game. Um, and once you get a couple stone settlements up, you're going to have way too much stone. So food and stone, uh, food, food and wood, definitely the way to go here. Then we have prayers to Ares. Uh, you get extra melee attack on all units in the army that can increase farther for sword units or during siege battles, or obviously increase missile damage to all units in the army. And this is a no brainer uh, given that we are running uh, range compositions uh, for Hippolyta just because of what her special units are and also what all her abilities are. And you can increase the experience of all these missile troops by 300 every turn. So, as you can see, by getting this combo here, you're pretty much set and you don't really need to go for things like Normat's Way, even though you could argue you'll rank up much faster with the combination of all of these and you have stronger troop much quicker. It just seemed like, you know, once you get to that point, once you get to the final uh, upgrade level, if you had gone the Normat's Way, you would just gain a bunch of rank, which is good, or you could just have a bunch of range the whole time and you can still eventually get there. And then we get to some interesting skills. I think, uh, the Vial of the Nyx is very strong. Nyx, the Knight Mother, uh, gives us the ability of triggering knight battles. Very, very good. And then 
Furthermore, we can have better boost in terms of our Aurora size of the hero in night battle, or what's really good is during night battle, we get 20% extra ammo to all friendly units. So this is a very must have combo in my opinion. Night battle is always one of my favorites. You take away not only the enemy reinforcement, but you also hit their morale by a little bit. Gift of Hermes, 10% uh, campaign movement range. This is also very amazing. Um, but in comparison, I'm probably going to give up the 10% just so that I can get Night Battle on the army. You can get another 10% in C, or you can get 5% when on land in addition to this. So 15% total that we have to say goodbye to because Vile the Nyx is on the other side. Then we come to uh, skill 13 here, which is where we can unlock the horse and the chariot. Or if we give up on these you can go for Combat Mastery, which will reduce the cooldown of all your active abilities by 30% total. I think I'll still go with the horse option. It's just nice to have the option of being on horseback. And when we need to, we can dismount. Uh, you can dismount both horses and chariots. Uh, someone has informed me of that. I've been misinformed on the chariot part. You will lose the bonus health you will receive from both the horse and the chariot. And you can see the health boost, right? You look on the left on the character stats. The chariot gives you 7,000 health. Right now she's uh, 3,700. So the horse actually doesn't affect your health, but the chariot more than double it. So if you dismount, you actually lose all that health in battle. And then when you exit the battle, you'll be at half health. Whereas the horse, it feels like it's not going to affect your health at all. So maybe the horse is still the better option that you can use some of your abilities. This also applies to uh, Pentathalea. So if you want to get Divine challenge and also a horse mount i think it works out perfectly you can just dismount to challenge an enemy general i don't know if you can remount the horse because i know you cannot remount the chariot once you leave the chariot's gone um but that's our options here finally we have inspired aim or truth so inspired aim like it says it gives us extra damage on our missile abilities or six rage costs per second once again high rage costs uh, character but also no way to gain rage which is really frustrating considering that Pentathalia has bloodthirsty but also not any like they, she has like two skills that use rage but here we have so many and then we can increase that to 60% damage or we can reduce the cost to five per second so because the cost is like six versus five I understand that's still you know a small difference but so small in my opinion that getting 20% extra damage is just straight up better um, or we can go with Truth. Uh, this does not have a rage cost, finally. It has a 30 second um, duration. It targets the ground, affects all allies in range. It also affects all enemy in range. So I assume the bonus is for our ally and the debuffs for the enemy. It affects 60 meter uh, distance. You can target the ground 200 meters away. So you don't have to be there to target it. And the effective range is 60 meters. And what it does is give all your troops plus 30% melee defense and gives all enemy troops. Oh, I oh I actually think this applies to both. So your troop will also gain the melee defense but also lose the melee attack. So this is called truth. So no one fights. Uh, so everyone has better chance to dodge abilities but also everyone has um, less chance to hit. So everyone's on truth. That can be farther increased in terms of duration to 60 seconds. And where this comes in handy is your units are dealing damage in terms of the range units in the back and your front line is just holding the enemy. So in this case, if you put truce on the area where your lines are clashing, then your troop has greater survivability. The enemy have greater survivability as well, but melee defense doesn't help against range attack. So in that aspect, you're still going to be pelting them with the arrows dealing the same amount of damage while they lose the ability to hurt your front line. So I think that's how you should use this ability. It is quite strong, given that it lasts quite a while and doesn't cost rage, which obviously is great. And you can use this far away from the scene. You don't have to charge in. And you're gonna just give up this damage ability that it's very hard for you to trigger because of the rage cost. So that wraps it up for Hippolyta. So for those of you who are looking to build your kingdom and defend it with your strong front line and archers and horse cavalry, uh, archers this is definitely the faction to go hope you guys enjoyed these previews and see you guys on the 24th when the game launches for free remember to get your total war access account registered it's for free and then link it to your epic game store and then you can claim it once the game is officially launched you can link the accounts now but you can't claim it until the game officially releases on the 24th and you have up to two weeks to do that 
So don't forget free game here and we'll get to play these um, once the launch happens. I'll be playing Pentathelia, like I mentioned earlier. The horde mechanic is just too tempting to uh, forego here. So hope you guys enjoyed these guys and we'll see you next time. Bye!